I'm very pleased to have with us in studio uh, Mr. Chris Williams from Delta Waterfowl. Chris, thanks for joining us, sir. Not a problem. It's it's pleasure good. to be here. Well, it was great talking to you in person. Uh, it was a few weeks ago we were talking about this fundraiser down in uh, North Carolina at uh, in the uh, Lacoma, uh, uh, Lacoma uh, That's schools. Correct. And uh, there were some folks who wanted to there was, raise money for the school. Uh, you all had donated a shotgun, right? Rifle. 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 Okay. Now, the rifle that was donated uh, wasn't raffled off at school. The kids weren't selling the tickets at school. There was really no involvement except that the money was going to benefit the local schools, that's, right? That's correct. Basically, the school was a third party. Okay. You know, they're receiving the funds. But you still had a few folks, and I should note it was a few folks. It was not like a majority of the community said, what's going on here? But there were a couple of folks who said, oh, this is wrong. They should be raffling off a typewriter or a, or a smartphone or something like that. Why are they raffling off a rifle? They thought it was inappropriate. Um, how did the, the, the bulk of the community respond to this? I'll tell you, overall, the response was absolutely wonderful. You know what I mean? That's nationwide. It's not just only the community. I mean, I think we sold tickets in 32 different states. Um, so, I mean, it, it made it across the wire and back. Wow. So, I mean, it's um, uh, certainly the coverage of the of the event itself, the guys at the local chapter there in Wilson, um, you know, they they took something that they thought that they would see a two to five hundred dollar, <coughs> excuse me, two to five hundred dollar, you know, revenue draw, simply made it ten thousand and thirty dollars to the school camp. That is amazing. So that is incredible. Congratulations. Well, thank you. It's, it's, it's a part of our volunteers. It's, you know, it's, it's, it's the core of our organization, grassroots fundraising at its best. And, you know, when, when those guys see a need, they step in. And, and that's, the, that's the best part about my job is getting to deal with those guys each and every day to help them be successful. Absolutely. And, you know, I think this says a lot about the sportsman community. Uh, that, that we do care about our communities. We care about the towns we live in. We care about not only our kids, but we care about our neighbors' kids. We right. care about those kids in the local school, and we right. want to see we want to see our communities be the best communities that they can be. That's it, and, and I mean it goes back to you know, like you said, outdoors, you know, sports heritage, the whole nine yards. You know, our, our biggest job as conservationists and sportsmen is to pass you know, that on to our children, you know, and that's one of our big initiatives at Delta Waterfowl is, you know, we have a first hunt program and it's not just for kids. It's basically, you know, surrounded by children, but, you know, first time hunters. And I mean, we can't expect anybody to stand up on this thing if we don't stand up with them. And, you know, we, that is one of our big programs, you know, mentored hunts, like we were talking about earlier before right. we came on, you know, we've got to introduce these kids to the outdoors. I mean, the average age of a waterfowl hunter is somewhere between 54 and 57. You know, I had, I, coming in the doors here, I didn't see anybody that fit that framework, you know, so we've got a lot of work to do. You know, we've, we've really got a lot of work to do. So, but uh, that, that is our goal, you know, and that's just one small piece of the puzzle, but we're, we're dead on it and, and heading in the right direction. Absolutely. And, you know, that, that's amazing uh, when, you, when you throw that, that number out. Now, listen, uh, not to take anything away from you folks in the 54 to 57-year-old right. age range, but I'm sure, look, you talk to anybody who's in their 50s, and if you tell them, listen, this, you're the average age of a waterfowl hunter, they're going to say, well, we need some new blood here. We need, some, we need that next generation. Where are they? And, and that's it. You know, we, we're to the point now that, you know, I have three small children, the oldest being eight, but yeah. every one of them, you know, they, they, they know, you know, they can do their duck identification, and they know, you know, at, at the proper time and place, they'll know their firearm safety, but it gets taught at home. Right. You know, and that's the thing. We, we need to continue, continue bringing people to the sport, you know, to, to embrace what we love so much. And it's what we fight for every day is the continuation and the future of waterfowl and waterfowl hunting. And that, that's what we're going to stay on. Well, you know, you, uh, like you said, we were talking before, uh, before you came on the air, you were up in Pennsylvania that's for a that's uh, mentored hunt over the past weekend. That's correct. Those guys have taken that, you know, program to a whole other level. I mean, they, um, they started out, you know, as, as doing a, a one, one hunt a year, you know, with some uh, mentors within the chapter, which would be our volunteers and having kids in the community. And they've taken it to a whole other level and they've come up with a first hunt team. I worked with them on that. And they're, instead of a, a one-time shop, you know, as far as taking a kid out of the community and bringing them in one time, these guys are signing them, these, these individuals up. I mean, they had a wounded veteran last year that signed up for the program and they mentored him, never been hunting before, but they, it's not a one and done. They mentored that individual the whole year. They took them out several times throughout the year that those people are welcome to call on the volunteers and help them. And it's just a, it's a, it's a great thing when you see those folks get introduced to the outdoors that truly it's not necessarily, they don't know where they're against it. They don't have the avenues and the means and, and those guys are there. That, you know, I think that's such a, a huge key. And I know this Saturday is national hunting and uh, fishing uh, a day. Hey. And, and, and I hope the folks take this opportunity to get out and take somebody out there because 
that's the thing. I mean, I grew up in the suburbs, and right. I, you know, I didn't really grow up with any family members around me who hunted. So I, 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 I was a grown up uh, and never hunted before. And if you don't, if you don't grow up in a hunting family, if you don't grow up with those traditions passed down to you, a lot of times as an adult, you think, man, I'd like to do that. But I don't want to look like the dork who doesn't know how to hunt. I don't want to be the, the complete newbie that people are going to be making fun of. And I think it's so important that, that folks understand, and we do a good job as sportsmen and gun owners and hunters, to say, don't worry about that. That's right. Every, you know? I was that Everybody starts out with, with that same knowledge well, base. But let, let's help you out and let's get you out there and have a good time. That's right. You know, I mean, I've been with, you know, people that were new before, and, you know, they they, they go, oh, real scared and, you know, tenuous. And I told them, look. It's like my dad told me a long time ago, you're going to have a first day at your job and a last day at your job, <laughs> you know? So today's the first day and we'll get through it. It'll be fine. You know, you, you that's that the expectation level is something people have to get past in it, you know, but we're, we're, we're going to work very hard. And that, that is our sole goal and mission is, you know, if, if we, if we don't fight for what we have now and protect the future, we, uh, we certainly need, need to, uh, re regress in our thoughts. Well, listen, I, again, I appreciate all the work that you guys are doing there at Delta Waterfowl, both in terms of getting folks out there and, again, doing doing what these members did down there in Wilson County, North Carolina, helping out the local school. That's it, Cam. I brought you a little present day. Uh-oh. Oh, oh the, wow. The, the staple of the uh, duck hunting community is the canvasback, and this uh, you know, the king of the ducks. So uh, a, a local carver, Joey Joves, is a real good friend of ours and a friend of mine, and he uh, – he signed this duck for you, and uh, he asked me, he said, where's this duck going again? I said, the, the guy that runs the NRA TV show, the, the news guy. So it is signed, Joey Jobes, to the NRA news guy, Cam. <laughs> so uh, we'll give you that, and I want to leave that with you. And I got you a, a Delta Waterfowl hat over here that you can possibly wear on the air sometime. Oh, that is, that is awesome. Joey, thank you for that. And, Chris, thank you so much, man. I really appreciate this. Man, it's always a pleasure. And uh, if you guys ever need anything, feel free to call on us. Uh, you know we will, man. Thanks so much for coming in studio and uh, we'll talk again very soon thank you very much Cam. absolutely